What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Multiverse Monologues, the podcast show where we like to travel across the multiverses and fandoms that we love to talk about the movies and television shows that accompany those universes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Star Wars Marathon. I am your co-host, Ben Rayside, and I it, it is my immense pleasure mm. to dig through the Star Wars universe. We've been covering every single Star Wars film. If you're just joining us for this one, we've been through the OT, the prequel trilogy, and some movies in between, and now we're fresh into the Disney era of Star Wars films. Last week, we covered Force Awakens, and this week, we have the absolute pleasure to bring you Rogue One, a Star Wars story, our ranking, our review, and our discussion for the second film in the Disney lineup of Star Wars films. In 2024, we bring you this review and ranking. Mm. Not in 2016, because in 2015, we all had our thoughts about Force Awakens, and we had different thoughts last week than how we previously did in 2015. Mm. Will that be the same way this year for Rogue One? Because we're eight years removed and many films and TV shows later. This is a post and or review of Rogue One after the uh, expertly interwoven first season that that was by Tony Gilroy. And we're back. We're reviewing Star Wars Rogue One. Not just me, Ben Rayside, but also the gentleman who helped make this podcast what it is. First off, Mr. Ethan Wensloff. Ethan, how are you? Guys, I'm doing really good, especially after hearing Ben give Andor some praise Ooh. in the intro. Come on, and, and, I, and I hope we're able to have a good podcast today because, as we know, Podcasts are built on hope, <laughs> but but years ago when me and Ben were planning this podcast, we we put a flaw deep in the system, and that flaw was that that Micah Hat oh. wasn't a part of the podcast yet. You know what? I can't do any intro any better than that. That that's your cue, Micah. How are well, you doing? Today? <laughs> you know, I, I was a little nervous. So I was a little afraid, but then I remembered that. It's all as the force wills it. So mm. I shouldn't be afraid here. Uh, I know that we're here to have a good time. Uh, I know that I'm, I'm included in this podcast, Ethan. Mm. And uh, I'm ready to talk about Rogue One. Micah, it's been a while. It's been a while. You're one with the force. With the force is with me. I'm one with the force. What do you want me to say? I already said it. I wanted you to say it again, Mike. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> says it more than once. Come on, Ethan. <laughs> you got to say it on repeat or else it doesn't work. Because we know that the two people who say that prayer in this movie live through the end oh. spoilers oh. spoilers we can't get into that yet yes. we got to go through a, a bunch of other things before yet. we <laughs> before we get to the mega discussion know. that comes at the end of rogue one and uh we all have our thoughts we're going to get into those but we know that you guys have your thoughts on rogue one this is typically when people go back and look at the disney era of star wars films this is generally people's favorite one and so leave your comments down below because I'd love to know what you guys think about Rogue One, a Star Wars story, the first anthology film. I'm not really counting Clone Wars. Would you no. say that's an anthology? This this is the big the first, first live good action. anthology film. You guys, might even say we're count it towards yeah. another trilogy in our <laughs> in our rankings, but let's be honest. That's about it. But that trilogy would be the anthology trilogy. Mm -hmm. So so yes. So but this is the first big budget. We hadn't seen something that wasn't really connected to the Skywalker films. You know, everything that came before had previously been a part of that. But this was separate. Even though I would say more than anything, it's the one the film that connects the most with the Skywalker saga, which which we will get into. But anyway, yes. Leave those comments down below. Leave a like on this video and think about subscribing. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming out. Just don't think about. It. Do it. Do, do or it. do not. There is no try. Come on. Well, Get, let's, yeah. uh, let, gentlemen. Let's let's do this podcast. Let's Ooh. hit the hyperdrive huh. and head over to the Star Wars galaxy. <sighs> Ship. What's your call sign, pilot? Um, we have to go. It, it's um. Say something. Come on. Rogue. Rogue one. 
Rogue One? There is no Rogue One. Well, there is now. The iron grip of the Galactic Empire tightens around the galaxy. <laughs> no, keep, I wanted to keep that in, bad. Keep rolling. Come on. In the shadows, whispers of resistance spread like wildfire. The stolen blueprints for the Empire's ultimate weapon, the armored space station known as the Death Star, ignite a spark of hope. Of what, Ben? Of hope? That's right. Oh, he said it, guys. <laughs> Jin <Podcast> Erso, <laughs> a renegade with a troubled past, is thrust into the heart of the rebellion, aided by a daring pilot, Cassian Andor, and a band of unlikely heroes. <laughs> Jin faces a desperate mission to steal the plans and strike a crippling blow to the Empire. The fate of the galaxy rests on the shoulders of this ragtag crew in a time of darkness and desperation. Oh. That is your plot summary for Rogue One. We didn't have a crawl to work off of this week because, as you know, this was the first Star Wars film to not have a crawl as a part of it. I'm, of course, I'm not talking about the Ewok films and the Clone Wars movie. Um, would, but this yeah, this has no like even intro. You know, it just... And it puts you right there with an epic shot of some rings and Admiral, or I should say, I should say, um, do the Ewok films have, have intros? I don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember those movies? Not either? the beginning what? or the middle or the end. Uh, I believe they had opening credits. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think they do, but I th there, cause there's that one dude narrating those movies, right? Yes. Yes. Who narrates the Ewok Frosty film? the Snow or no, uh the the <laughs> snowman from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. Mm. Yes, silver and gold guy. And that Frosty? No. Yes. Guy. No. <laughs> in, a, in a different timeline it is. Yes. But Rogue One, we're here to talk about Rogue One, a Star Wars story, <laughs> not <guys>. Rudolph. <laughs> not Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Um yes, how how long has it been, guys? Cuz I know we kind of talked about this at the end of the Force Awakens discussion, but I I know it's been a not so long for Ethan and I, um, but I know that I remember that Micah. It's been it's been some time, and I remember thinking back to your review. So, but I just want to get an update from you guys, Ethan. Where first off, Ethan, where where is your journey taking mm. you with Rogue One? Start us off with that night on December fifteenth of twenty sixteen. Right, I think I went December sixteenth actually, so I didn't go the the first day for this. But I remember driving to the theater with with all my family, and we went to see this one. And this one, went, I don't specifically remember that experience of sitting in the theater. I remember going, but I remember just going, man, that was a really really good movie. And of course, the the Darth Vader scene at the end, everyone loved that. But uh, my last time before watching it for this podcast was actually right before Andor came out. Ben, me and you yes. sat down and watched it. And I'd say when I watched it before Andor, I, I was really hot on it. I was like, this, this is really good. And then getting to sit down and watch it this time. And then specifically in like the first 40 minutes was like, oh, maybe this movie isn't as good as I remember. Ooh. And then the 40 minute mark hits. And I have to say, like, everything beyond, like, the first 40 minutes is some of my favorite Star Wars, period. Mm. So I am really hot on this movie. I liked it a lot. It's not perfect. I don't I don't know. We're, we're going to talk about it. And I think we all have going to throw around where we want this to fall in our ranking as we record this. But yeah, I really like this movie. I love what it does for the, uh, you know what, I, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. Take so it away. My my question to you, Ethan, did, was this this time? Because you said your first time was a family watch. Was this time? Did you watch it with any family members? Yes, yeah, so I got to watch it with my dad and my brother Marcus. As I try to watch all these together, and uh, my my dad's take leaving it was he he was like, "Wow, I this one this one's really good. This one's probably gonna for my dad. This one sits at fourth place. He says under under the first three, but then right under there and. It it goes along with the the same love he had for or not love but appreciation he had for the Force Awakens is you get to see these original trilogy ships original trilogy story with modern effects modern visuals and great visuals if I might add oh too gosh. so mm. yes yeah. the yeah. visuals is something that needs so much praise for Rogue One I can't even the space battle at the end is which we'll get into fully but that is truly truly impressive so Dad likes it. Ethan likes it. Did He's Marcus watch it with you? Marcus liked it too. It, it it was weird because 
totally the beginning he was not engaged at all. He was kept asking questions and kind of really annoyed. He, sometimes he'll hold the remote and he'll do that thing where you check how much time's left in the movie. He did it like, that like three Marcus times. Marcus does that? Yeah. And then I took the He's remote. Too young to be doing I that. took the remote from him and then the whole last bit he was like locked in Maybe on the screen. Maybe that's why you were annoyed with the first uh, 40 minutes was just Marcus. No, <laughs> no, it was a little more than that, but okay. uh, yeah, I'm excited to dive into this. Okay. Mr. Het, when was the last time you've seen Rogue One? I don't remember. I think I've only seen this maybe twice. Uh, first time was a laundry movie. Second time was at my uh, my Nana and Papa's house with my Aunt Katie. I don't, I don't know when those were. I don't remember when I saw it. Um, I obviously saw it before watching The Last Jedi So because it's in my ranking. So are you saying that this is a, a, a new addition to your, your bin of laundry movies? Yeah, this because was a laundry movie. Initially, this wasn't in your bin. You, Both you this only had Solo in your bin. and Solo were laundry movies. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'm pretty sure. All right. Uh, I didn't think that it would be anything special because it wasn't It wasn't a numbered Star it's Wars not? movie. Come on. It's just a piece of garbage, not I... a... Not an episode. What are we do? What are we doing here? So, <laughs> I remember thinking it was okay. Uh, at finishing watching the movie uh, for the first time, I remember the battle being the 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 final fight being very striking and very. Uh, it, it, the hallway scene was just how could you forget that? That was one of the coolest parts of this whole movie. And uh, yeah, I I left my room. From folding laundry, thinking... I mean, I didn't leave the theater. I left my room. So I left my room thinking, yeah, that was really good. But this time, this time I watched it. Oh, and I guess the second time I, I also thought it was all right. Similar thoughts. But this time I paid attention to it. <laughs> this time it wasn't just like a put it on, you know, we're just going to watch Star Wars. I, I hope if we're recording these, Mikey, you pay attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I definitely didn't fall asleep. Was it, wasn't it a Venom where he, he paused it, it took a nap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then come back the next day mm -hmm. and watch it. Uh, Rogue One is a very good movie. I love the cinematography. I love the score. This feels the most like John Williams that we'll ever get. I mean, even... Uh, the shows and the the sequel movies, none of them, none of them really come close to what John Williams did, except for what Michael Giacchino does in this movie. In my opinion, I love the themes he makes. I love the oh, the, the visual effects are just amazing. The acting is on point. Mm. I love that you mention John Williams and, and the sequels as if John Williams didn't do the sequels. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like what there's this feel that Michael Giacchino is going for and it really hits it on the head. He's man. emulating that original trilogy feel. This movie was supposed to do that mm -hmm. just as Force Awakens was yeah. as well. I mean, but it's like two ways to attack this problem. So you need a new entry into the Star Wars franchise, right? But you need to appeal to both the oldest fans and the youngest fans alike. Force Awakens tackled the appeal to the youngest fans and the oldest fans. But this one is appealing to the oldest fans and maybe outsiders. It, maybe maybe film people. Maybe war movie people. Because yeah. this is the most of a war movie we have ever gotten out of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It yeah, puts the war in Star does, Wars, would yeah. you say? Exactly. There's like no politics in this movie, which was a huge critique of the prequels, and that was the only argument they had to go off of at the time. I mean, that that's nah, why nah, this movie nah, was made. Not the nah. only one, but <laughs> they they certainly went off a lot more on their arguments. I mean, they're, sure. they're, they're, that was the biggest one I heard about. The I, yes, the, that and Jar Jar. Mm -hmm. but And that they didn't maybe make good movies. Maybe Ben, go Ro rewatch Rogue those uh, yeah. podcasts for those for those opinions. But yeah, I yeah I've. I've seen this movie many times ever since it, but I'll tell you this much. What? No, just the way it felt like a brag, Ben. I've seen this I've way seen this. more times than you have. These like guys a... suck, okay? Let, let me let me tell you something. I saw this in the theater. Ben, I, I don't want to steal your whoa. thunder. Go ahead. <laughs> Did not want to brag here. Was not intentional. <laughs> but I have seen this way more times than these losers. Jeez. That's for sure. Um, I went and saw this again in theaters in 2020 when they had their 
stupid like mystery yeah. re-release you know and th- this was it you know i was hoping for something else but it had to got... have been a disney star wars it, movie though it, had it did to have been. it did um and i've always I, you know i've always had kind of a soft spot for this movie ever since i saw it in theaters i remember seeing it with uh, my buddies in high school and my dad and we went to culver's afterwards and just sat and talked about it and my dad was saying how much it reminded him of a new hope and he actually went home himself crying because he was so emotionally moved I, yeah that, <laughs> that felt and, like he was with the force that and he, he was one with the force went on line and he looked up the beginning of a new hope and watched oh. the beginning sequence because he was like oh yeah that that's right after that scene that's I think he didn't that's just really know cool. that. He didn't just pull that he, from the archive. My dad's the, not the biggest Star Wars guy. He knew. <laughs> he knew. But but this time around in 2024, I would say that I I'm still a fan. You know, this in my for my money pending a solo rewatch. Don't get ahead of yourself, Ben. We have now rewatched all pending, of the sequels. Pending a solo rewatch, this is for sure the best uh disney film he's forgetting think... about the mando grogu movie oh, okay <laughs> all right that at the time of listening to this for you years in the future have already seen oh yeah that's why you're here because you love star wars again that would be my Here favorite one um no it's i i still really like this movie guys I, and i i don't know if i have as Ooh. many qualms with the first <laughs> 40 <laughs> minutes a hot take ben. but yeah i still really like rogue one i I don't really, yeah. But yeah, I was expecting. So Ethan uh, comes up to me yesterday, and he's like, "All right, just keep in mind the beginning of this feels like a completely different movie than the last half." I didn't feel it at all. Okay. That I guess that was something that Ethan felt, but apparently there's a reason behind it. Oh, there is. Oh, for sure, because this movie went through production hell. I'm surprised it was even released. That's. Seriously, it went through a whole but summer it, of reshoots. Nothing compared to what what Solo goes through later. That's, but honestly, all the Star Wars films mm-hmm. after like Last Jedi, you know, did Tony Gilroy direct all the reshoots? I'm not sure how that goes as far as who came in and did what. Um, but I just know that during that summer of 2016, there was a lot that was switched around. Yeah. If you watch the original trailer, there's a lot of stuff. Like, there's a shot of uh, Cassian and Jin running across the beach with the Death Star plans. And as we know, that that's not even... How would that even be a part of what the current story is? And there's a, a great line from the original trailer where Jin, Jin says, Well, that's what we do. I, I, I rebel. You know, she says that. Like, it, it was, it's terrible. But, yeah, reworks a ton. There's also unused shots of Vader in the original trilogy. What more did they have of Darth Vader? Unfortunately, we'll probably never know. Although the Vader we do get in this, I would say. Actually, they recycled it over to the Kenobi show. You know, <laughs> Ooh. go watch Kenobi because <laughs> yeah. you love it. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you want that. But again, we talk about this movie being a different Star Wars film for sure. And it starts right at the beginning of the film when the our main one of our main heroes just straight up kills a guy. Mm-hmm. Cassie and Andor just kills the first. I, and I remember watching that and being like, oh, is he not? Is he, He's going to be uh, like a Han Solo, a darker version of a Han Solo type character. Like he, no doubt that he shot first. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no that, sure. That's really striking too because he's a general in the rebellion. So you're not sure... If you can trust him, you're not sure. Maybe he's the spy. Maybe he's like, and it's cool to see that backstory in Andor where, um, you know, he he starts as just some dude, right? And then he accidentally kills a dude and, and that happens to be a guard. And then that whole, go watch Andor. Amazing. Uh, and I, I love the world building that this gives without having Jedi in it, without having, I mean, there's, there's force, but there's no like no talk of the the jedi that i mean there's 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 plenty of of other elements of star wars that we can focus on and that's what this movie's about is expanding your view beyond just the jedi mm-hmm. <laughs> and all these plans 
and all these planets because we go through like four Dude, different planets at the very beginning it of the felt film. very uh guardians of the galaxy yeah yeah i felt that too planets. they popped up the, the the text a little description of what it is and you're there and then like two seconds later boom you're on a different planet mm-hmm. like whoa. is it too jarring no i, I didn't it. think so i, I loved, loved it. it yeah yeah like, the going... beginning of the movie is when you're supposed to do that and i i, I liked it yes because like you get that beautiful shot of um Krennic, I thank you. I just remembered his name. Him coming down onto Welcome. the planet, <laughs> you got, it. and he starts talking with Galen. I think the intro to this movie is really strong. I do agree. At some points during the middle of this movie, I think the whole chunk where they have to go find Saw Gerrera, yeah, that to me feels a little slow and I agree. Paced really weird. I agree, especially because I don't know if I connect with these characters as well as I do with Ray and Poe and Finn. Not not saying that like they're bad characters in yeah. Rogue One, but they don't endear me to them. And maybe that's not the point. That's also up for discussion. Is that the point to make you endear to each one of these characters? So if I'm going to plug Andor, which I probably will many times in the podcast, Luthen Ryle has a great monologue in that show where he he's, uh, basically says, I live to fight for a sunrise that I will never see. Mm-hmm. And... I kind of do maybe when the when Gareth Edwards made this movie, he didn't intentionally make all the characters forgettable. But I think that's kind of to me, that's kind of the point now when I rewatch it is look at the sacrifice these characters made so we could get this hope Mm. so that this hope could be brought to Luke Skywalker and he could blow up the Death Star. It's all like a very messy plan when you look at it in the context of A New Hope. But I like that's what to me makes a rebel a rebel is them willing to fight for the bigger or fight for the cause and not just so, oh, yeah, Cassian, that was a great re- rebellion leader. No, Cassian sacrificed himself so we could live in a time where the Empire didn't rule. That's what I think is really cool about yeah, it. Yeah, and what a bittersweet ending, too, with uh, just barely scraping over the finish line. Like the, these rebels are trying their darndest to get it through the the to to get it to the Tantive Four so that it can escape and and the door gets stuck and he's like come on help me help me and Darth Vader shows up <sighs> oh yeah. man and this is the coolest Darth Vader hands down in my opinion at least mm-hmm. uh, I, I agree. is there a, is I have there a, no complaint yeah I mean Darth Vader hallway scene is you don't see Darth Vader like this and to see the fear that he strikes in these rebels after this long you know period of time of not having Darth Vader mm-hmm. in theaters I mean you go through all of 1 2 3 a little bit at the end of 3 but it's not you know you get episode 7 you get Rogue One with the combination of Force Awakens Rogue One I would say that you get about everything a Star Wars fan was hoping to find in the newest uh, installments I, I can't complain. At the time, no. I was like, right, yeah. Rogue One the, was everything Star, that I should have. Star <laughs> Wars was so back. They were like killing oh, yeah. it in all categories. And oh yeah, yeah I, what was the other category? Battlefront. Yeah, this game mm-hmm. was the sole reason why Battlefront was so hyped. This movie. Yeah, this yeah. movie because that final war scene, that final battle on was it Scarif? Scarif. That yeah. final Scarif. Battlefront. The final Battlefront. Um, and then that blew up into a huge EA's like, we need some money and then charge for microtransactions and then a whole thing with the, oh, it goes crazy. But, uh, Battlefront would not have gotten the exposure it got if not for episode seven and Rogue One coming out at the same they time. They definitely improved the experience of playing that game. Oh yeah. Cause, Cause they- watching this, watching episode seven, you're like, all right, episode seven, I want to fly those ships. Millennium Falcon. Who I want to fly over Jakku. Uh, I want to be just like some random dude with a lightsaber, and then Rogue One. Finn. Oh, I want to be a ground trooper, man. I want to. I want to shoot stormtroopers. I want to. Oh, it's it's it really gets that excitement back in for Star Wars. Star Wars was number one again, and the numbers showed it. Everyone saw these movies, and I didn't hear many com- people complain about them at the time. The big complaint is that I don't connect with the characters. I didn't care when they died. But yeah. your answer, Ethan, is a great way to, it's a great rebuttal to those people who have that complaint. And 
you know, it might be justified, you know, but I I prefer to lie on your side for sure, where it is, this is what a rebellion means. Mm-hmm. These characters who don't even get mentioned or talked about in the original trilogy. Now, of course, it's because of when they came out, but that's what it is. All we get is a throwaway line that, oh yeah, we got the, we got the plans. You yeah, know? and I remember the lead up to this movie is what we were all talking about it. Okay, these are all new characters. They're isn't story with these characters later on so the potential for really the first time ever in a star wars movie was could all these characters die and as you get into the final act and you get your first what is it is bodhi the first to go of our crew you get bodhi the the pilot he goes first and you start to get that sense oh man this isn't going to be one of those movies where everyone just you know get it's not a happy ending it's Mm -hmm. not a happy story and i think it solidifies like the threat of the empire but then also like the the fight that the rebels have because even this little victory like Jin Jin and Cassian don't know what happens to those plants they transmitted Mm. they go they're like I hope someone got those they just have hope Mm. and they die with that glimmer of hope and I I I don't know I really like it yeah but there are a couple characters that we do see from episode four that make an appearance here we've got Tarkin showing up Fully CGI. CGI. Yeah. What did you guys think of CGI Tarkin? I, I, I'm surprised that the lip syncing of these CG characters isn't as good as it could be. Because yeah. we have animated movies. I don't know. Maybe it's some complication that we don't understand. But that's the only thing that's Uncanny Valley for me. I feel like the rest of the face was very spot on. The resolution and like the little details of the pores and the, the lighting and the... Everything looked just like how we did in episode four. There's just that little amount right. that, that puts you in that. It's hard. Of- it's hard because when you know, you know, and mm. when you know, you're just you're just looking at Tarkin's face. Leia is pretty close. Mm-hmm. Leia is a lot more spot on, but she only has like one line. Yeah. One thing I did notice with Tarkin is they have him facing away from the camera for a lot of his lines, yep. especially at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So you buy it before you can critique it. And that works for me. So does Guy Henry, who plays Tarkin, did he provide the voice or was the voice AI generated? They have. I. Oh, man, I, I might be wrong here, but I think the guy who played him, who voiced him in Clone Wars, okay. came back to do it for this. Right. But I could be wrong on that. I'm not 100 yeah, percent sure. Maybe. But it's it's not him. He and the, does well, whoever it did it was really good. Oh, 100 percent. I'm not going to lie. I think it's. I think it's pretty good, guys. Like, it's there is a, an element on, yeah. of Uncanny Valley, you see. But also, I'm kind of just glad Tarkin's in this story so that there can be, like, a, a foil. You can see the, the greedy, you know, Imperial admirals in their meetings, you know, a bunch of white dudes just going on about power. You'll speak to the Emperor on my behalf. You know, careful not to choke on your aspirations. I guess he voices them, too. Does he really? Yeah. You know who else makes an appearance here? Wow. That uh, it, little known fact, um, Red Leader and Gold Leader mm. from original film reels from 1977 that were not used were put in this movie. Yes, and yes. I I just learned that that's really cool. That is cool, and you can tell by when there was this there was this look to it. I, I right. was like, wait a minute. Well, why does that feel so? Did they do that on classic. purpose because like the X Wing interior has this this feel to it? Or I guess that was original film stock. That's, That's cool. super cool. And and they give an answer just nonchalantly of why there's a gap and Luke fills the red five position on the rebellion squadron. Because Red Five dies your, in this. Your like, wife had a great letterbox review I saw. I yes. think she mentioned Red Five's death and but, rest in peace. But rest in peace, absolutely. And honestly, just Rogue One does what a really good prequel should do. It makes me look on the original trilogy like it's an even better experience mm-hmm. watching this. And then it leads right into it because, like you said, Ethan, the rebellion's a th- the Empire is a threat, mm-hmm. like big time. Because you just watched freaking Vader murder a bunch of dudes. And then he walks onto the Tantive Four. Watching that scene after that much more intimidating, even more than it already is. Mm -hmm. And so, not that I am digging, uh, dogging on the prequels here, but this is a really good prequel 
to the original trilogy. Maybe the best one yet. And as far as whoa. enhancing what that like the source material was. Because sure. I mean, because it makes it so like especially the Empire part of things, it makes it so much more mm. fearful. And also there's some really good moments with the rebellion in Rogue One. The council sequences, I really like those. And seeing all the different rebellion leaders at the council, them going back and forth about what makes a rebellion, what they need to do, what they can't do. And then Jin just being like, well, okay, you know what? We have to get this done. So I'm going to do it with or without your help. We're going to get the heck out of here. It just, it's so, it throws you right into Star Wars. Mm -hmm. It throws you right into this huge moment. And it doesn't really give you time to like adjust to the story, like if you're not a Star Wars fan, no, you don't know what the who the Emperor Empire is and what any of this stuff is or what oh, with this Death Star. I don't know, what. but I feel like it gives you enough where to where if you are an outsider, you can get along pretty well. Like there's this big weapon, uh, they have to find the plans. Straightforward story, right? I would love to get someone's take who's never seen any Star Wars and they watch this. You should have had Marcus start with this. Ah, oh, dang it! What do you guys think? Is this the movie you have them start with if you have a friend who's never seen Star Wars? See, because that, that's an argument because I think we all collectively agreed A New Hope is where you start the first Star Wars. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't want someone to start with one. Right. But as Ben said, no, you wouldn't want to start with one Yeah, for, for the most part. I mean, because of context, depending. What do you mean context? I think that are the you a story one guy? For, the story for one is enhanced. There, there are some liberties taken. Hundred percent. Where yep, you, I agree. They don't introduce things as much as they do in Episode Four. Episode Four is the one they introduce the Force. You know, it flows through us. It's all around us. Mm -hmm. All that. You know, the Uncle Ben stuff. Mm -hmm. And you don't get that as much in Episode One. So you can build up the mysticism of the Jedi and of the Force and the religion that is the Jedi a lot more if you start with four, five, six, one, two, three. Then do you do four? What do you think? Or then do you do Rogue One? Right I mean, yeah, that. yeah, Rogue One. Saying. That's what I meant. Yeah. I think you have to be a Star Wars fan to get the most out of this movie. And you might say that about any sequel yeah. or prequel to Star Wars, but sure. so much of this is built off of how iconic Episode 4 is. Mm. Every bit of Episode 4 down to the two scum guys in the <laughs> cantina is in this film. The he Death doesn't Star. like you. Yeah. So... Being that big of a Star Wars fan, and also even now, like we're going through this series now, we're taking more of a critical eye. I notice so much more connections, just the feel of how this movie is made, and especially, Micah, you mentioned this up top, the music. Mm -hmm. The music, e even more than the sequel trilogy and any other music we've gotten for the, the sequels and series that we've gotten on Disney+, Plus, it is emulating episode four without a doubt i mean not only in the themes but his even the new themes that are brought out by michael giacchino like he did a fantastic job with this score and i i would probably say it's the best score given to us by a, a project that's not a part of so ben's gonna give the greatest score is that what you're <laughs> for saying rogue one exactly stay tuned for my <laughs> shout score, out michael guys. g michael yeah, giacchino man. i gotta talk about him Every week, because this is my goal with all these um, uh, newer Disney era Star Wars movies, is to talk about Lost at least once in the podcast. And Michael Michael G gives me the perfect excuse. I got his I got his vinyl hanging over my shoulder. I got mine Come too. on, yeah. But one thing I do want to talk about is uh, Ethan. You said that the Saw Gerrera uh, scene, like that that element in the middle of the movie isn't as entertaining i really like that building mm -hmm. I, I i are you talking about just no the so interactions between so i and say the, to me the scene when they're on that that planet where it's raining i don't know the name of that planet but where Jin's father dies that planet, oh, the Edu. imperial planet Edu is the Every, name of it i say everything before that is like a i don't know maybe like a seven out of ten for mm. me like structure wise pacing wise story wise but then but then everything after that one scene is just so highly elevated for me that I feel this confl confliction and knowing the behind the scenes, it's no wonder why I feel that as the reshoots come into play there. And I do believe Tony Gilroy came in to direct the reshoots, but I'm 
I I can't solidify. Like, I feel like the character building and world build and like the establishing of these characters is really good mm-hmm. in the first forty five minutes. Everything before then is. I don't know which part of the, which half of the movie is my favorite. If is the first mm. half or the second half, because we get such great introductions, such as Donnie Yen as you know, what is it, Chirut? Chirut Imwe. Chirut Imwe, yeah. and we have um, what's the other dude's name? We've got Baze Bat- Malibus. Baze Malibus. They're introduced in such a way where all you have to hear is they were like worshippers of the Force, and now that the Kyber crystals are all being taken away. They're just kind of being annoying, <laughs> but that's coming from a certain character, and that was coming from uh, from Cassian himself, and he mm-hmm. was that. That's just what the Empire wants you to think, but really, they are these very respectable, um, you know, just force willed people. Mm-hmm. And I love the the difference between these two guys. Ba- Baz, Baz, he is uh, he was a believer in the Force, right? He had this uh, used to be, you know. Oh, now, now it's all luck. It's luck now. It's not the force. It was it was me who saved you. And mm-hmm. and true, it's he's all the force is the the will. Like the will of, yeah. of life is is through the force. And I am one with the force. Super cool dynamic to me. And if you know the backstory of Jedi, which I didn't know before, uh I listened to the twelve hour episode one analysis. He talked about Jedi for a little bit. This is where the first users of the force uh, discovered the force like this is where it began was this planet so to have it be destroyed this holy city is a big deal and that's what they were trying to show in this it doesn't quite convey it as they just say holy city that but they don't say the importance of it that's why that's why it's so important that this city was destroyed by something as significant as the death star its first target now that's going to go down in history as the Death Star destroyed mm, the first yeah. Force city, and they do a lot of cool stuff with the lore in this. Like when you pan across Jeddah, you have that statue yeah. of the Jedi that's coming out of the sand. Such a cool mm. image on screen. And when I saw that in the theaters, I was like, "Oh man, are this are we going to get some Jedi in here?" No, you get Chirrut. He's he's well, your Jedi character. Th- this more than anything makes the Force feel like a religion and mm. a faith. Oh because yeah. It's not about what can the force do for it's not about I can get these cool force abilities now. It's just I trust in the will of mm. the force. And it's totally how they how they uh introduced the force in episode four. So they watched episode four and they were like, That's what the force is. <laughs> and they made a movie about it. <laughs> that is how that's the what force I love. Works. That's what I love is that this is the most faithful uh prequel to episode four. This, Super cool. I think in many people's minds, at elements of this film was going to be, this was going to be the Star Wars prequels that people mm-hmm. had in their minds before the prequels came out. Yep. This was going to tell the story of how we got to where we got to in A New Hope. This for sure does that. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to ask you guys this. How do you feel about them casting... Another white brunette female actress in a lead role in the next Star Wars film. <laughs> She's different. She's different. Like, do, you, do you think that's a wise move by I, Disney? I feel like she's not as much of a... What was the term? A Mary Jane? Mary, Mary Sue. Sue Mary what Sue. They used to call. Yeah. A Mary Jin or so. <laughs> She's not as much as Ray is, uh, where she can do everything. She's proven herself through uh, assumed experience. We we are introduced to her. It, she's in a prison, so she got there for a reason. She's the so, uh, daughter of a very smart guy, Galen Urso, right? And she can hold her own. This is proven. This is shown. It's not just like it happens and. We just have to go along with it. Rogue One sells me on Jenner so a lot better than Ray is in Force Awakens. Mm. And it's not for me. This isn't because I remember when this happened. When you know Force Awakens happened, and this happened. I don't remember there being tons of at least from where I was. Like, oh my goodness, another woman. Like, what is it? 
I don't know. The way you presented it. There was, that's the why way I you bring presented it up. is kind of like we should be angry. No, well, that's why I bring it up because people were back in the day. Mm. But I like what you have to say because absolutely Jen Aerosol sells me on her character. And I just like, I want to bring it up because just because, like, I will say in the Disney era, females have just they there are a any lot they're diversity in the lead. of any kind yeah. kind of gets attacked i, th- I like, think it helps that we know more about Jin or so in this one movie we know who her lineage is we know what she's doing we know uh her motive is very clear in this movie and ray's motive isn't very clear she's just like i'm a scavenger and i'm trying to make my way through the galaxy and 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 i'll i'll fight the first order if i have to and what okay but Jin, it's very clear her father is the one who planted this this uh, handicap in the Death Star to destroy it. Mm-hmm. And now she has to convince the Rebellion that Galen was telling the truth, one, and two, that they need to send a squadron out to be rogue. <laughs> and... <laughs> the first one. <laughs> the first one. And my, my, and my whole point to this is to say that I don't care who's in the lead of a Star Wars Mm. film. As long as your story is there, you could put anyone there. It doesn't matter that you have a female leading the uh, the next consecutive huge Star Wars film there. Because, I don't know, that just kind of bugged me. I went and looked at a lot of reviews and Mm -hmm. stuff before this, and I saw that being one of the complaints. Again, as long as the story is there, guys, that is not an issue. The key isn't... Who you cast and who you throw into roles, the key is you make a good movie. That that's the key. And yeah. it uh I no, I'm not gonna say that. Never mind. <laughs> and I would say this is a good movie because they do flesh out Jin's character. You're right. All the motivation with her father, it's all there in that beginning scene. And then you have that great, fantastic bit of acting by Mads Mickelson as he gives his basically manifesto of life. Oh man. Very much actually reminded me of the scene. Uh, in Andor, uh, the on Rick's Luke. Road, the manifesto of oh, I'm oh, forgetting from, her name. Uh, Cassian's uh, mom. Cassian's mom, yeah, yeah. and maybe Mar- Marva, Martha. Marva, yeah. yeah, yeah. Her manifesto. It's like this is all of my life. I've devoted all of my life to doing this, and the emotion given there is it's super palpable. And I love the bit of acting on uh, Jen Erso's part where she literally, when the communication breaks down, she like falls to the ground, like holy crap. Everything I've thought about for the last 16 years of my life is just false. My father's been trying to help me. Mm-hmm. Remember, everything I do, I do it to protect you. There is so, so much good stuff in this movie. I, I don't know. I, I can't help but gush on a lot of what this movie has to offer. Yeah, his, his apology is one of the best written apologies. You have to write a certain way because you can't respond to the apology she can't respond to a hologram that's been recorded. Uh, what's the line in there? Uh, it's, so I did the one thing nobody expected. I lied. I learned to lie. I played the part of a beaten man, resigned to the sanctuary of his work. I made myself indispensable. And all the while, I laid the groundwork of my revenge. We call it the Death Star. There is no better name. And the day is coming soon when it will be released. He shows his motive very clearly to mm-hmm. his daughter because he knows that there may not be another time to explain himself. He know he shows her that he is working for, you know, the downfall of the he's not necessarily working for the rebellion, but he's looking for any grasp. And I love the line that Jen Urso says to confirm that she understood uh that oh what did she say? It was like he he knew oh yeah yeah it was very Oppenheimer like, and that was one of the yeah, the, the names of the movie, right? Gal- so Galen Erso it very much feels like an Oppenheimer type. Yeah, and the original uh, screenplay for this movie was titled "Destroyer of Worlds" because mm. that's literally what the Death Star is. It destroys worlds, and famously, whatever. If you don't know the Oppenheimer quote, he says, "I am Death, Destroyer of Worlds." After he creates the uh, the bomb, so I feel Galen Erso is a very mirrored image of that yeah i love so cassian andor he uh he approaches jen and he's like he built the death star all right and like how can you forgive the guy who built the death star and then jen Urso explains 
that there's this little spot. Oh, it it's just so perfect. To and, me. Like, and all the while, as she's as he's explaining and she's like starting to break down, it's intercut with them priming the Death Star to shoot that area yeah. on Jetta. Mm-hmm. Come on, that's that's good stuff right there, man. And like we got to talk about when Jetta is blowing up because never before have we seen like the Death Star blow. Because even the when you watch the scene in A New Hope, uh, what what, not, what Coruscant? No, what's the Alderaan? Alderaan, yeah, Alderaan just oh, man. blows up like nothing. Yeah, sh- and we get we, we have get, to yeah back rest in peace. R. I. P. Jimmy, Jimmy Smith, Smith, bro, <laughs> Bail Organa. Rest- He's like. I've got to go back to Alderaan to show that there's. We got to be. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Thank you. I got was on there. I got to go back home, guys. This Don't is leave the them only safe place. Back home. Oh. No, but as the planet is blowing up and they're running towards the ship to escape, that's when you really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Death Star is a threat, but here you get to you get to see the the toll it takes on people and a planet, and that is at one. Uh, level one power for the Death mm-hmm. Star. That was an interesting point for me too. Is that they caused all this damage just on level one? Mm-hmm. What was the level that they used for Episode Four? Was it like full bore to destroy Alderaan? Alderaan just like like just com- put <laughs> yeah, completely gone. I love that it gives context for how the Death Star gets its power through the kyber, kyber crystals yeah, that they man. harvest in Jeddah. And I love the scale. The scale of just threats and size of things of things in this. So you get the TIE fighter, right? It swoops across the screen and then you see this little, this little speck and Oh, Oh, it's, Oh, that's a, that's a star destroyer. Okay. That's huge. That the TIE fighter flies closer. You see the scale of the TIE fighter to the death, uh, the star destroyer. And then that comes completely into frame from the shadows. Super cool shot. That they yeah, wait a minute. Empire. Adam, what yeah. is this? Adam work was what so is this behind it? The Death Star. Boom. Oh, that's not even a billionth of the size. <laughs> the big old saucer. I love that shot. I love how huge the Death the Death Star looks. But I also feel like it feels smaller than the other movies. Hmm. Like they make it feel huge in this. But in the OT, it feels a lot smaller. I think it's because they don't. I mean, in fly this- around on it like they yeah. do in a new hope because they're that, flying very fast <laughs> in and the, the the star destroyers look so small in this everything just looks smaller so if you put yeah. that ship onto yeah. the death star <laughs> and you're flying trench run style how many times would you make it around <laughs> i don't know it didn't feel like a planet sized mm-hmm. space so station. you went from everything feels so big no, no, no. they make it feel huge but compared to the ot it doesn't feel as big as what they set it up to be in Compared to what we know, I yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I so the uh, OT makes I don't it agree feel with gigantic. What you're saying, no, no, I was I, I was it, ready yeah. for you to be done, Micah. Oh. Yeah, with that. Oh well, <laughs> no, no, that. I get, keep going. Micah. We know what you're saying. You've explained it, but it, we just don't agree. It with doesn't. That. Yeah, we don't agree, or it doesn't click. I don't know. Do it you might, guys? Do you guys agree that? Director Krennic is one of the best Imperials that he we've gotten so in recent good. time. Yeah. Yes, he's way better in this than you, in, were, uh, you were this close. Any other Marvel <laughs> garbage <laughs> farming? Really, man of your talents. I he has this way about him. Like, oh look, there's Lyra back from the dead. It's a miracle. He is the. He might be my favorite Imperial officer, maybe ever. Is that a hot take? Is uh, Tarkin an Imperial officer? He would. He would so be. He beats Tarkin. I would say he I beats accept, Tarkin. I accept your he, agreement. I don't know. He's so good. Ben, well, I mean, aside from the fact that Ben Mendelsohn is a great, great actor, and we've gotten some good ones in in Rebels and and in uh, in the Bad Batch, but I I think I, mean, I don't know, man. I I think uh, Krennic takes the cake. Especially because he he's he is exactly what an imperial admiral should be. Oh yeah, sniveling, greedy, power hungry. He even tests it with Vader when he goes to Vader's castle. Oh, he's shot hungry. beautifully. He shows up. He's yeah. like, I, I, I can get credit for this, right? Um, please, you know, can please. I can I please? 
You were not summoned here to grovel, Director Credit. <laughs> like, get out of here. You're wasting my time. Oh, man. Yeah. But he's exactly what an Imperial Admiral should be. I like, I, I think Krennic's great. Yeah, I love his, uh, his, his barking orders towards the... So uh, all of the other admirals and commanders in general, whatever we've seen in the OT, they're very... I mean, Tarkin. You look at Tarkin, you look at... Um, just all these other generals, and they're they're very composed. Yep. They're very. We're gonna plan these very carefully. I shall assume full responsibility. Yeah, and, and, and here he's like, "Are we blind? Send in a battalion." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Send the ground troops. Are we blind? Deploy the garrison. <laughs> yeah, like awesome. I love this guy. Yeah, he he's good. He's one of the best. Um, as far as far as we because we covered Jin, we haven't really talked about Cassian. All that much. And Ethan, I wanted to pose this question yeah. to you because I was thinking about this one myself. He says in this movie, I've been in this fight since I was six years old. I was thinking about that too. Mm -hmm. In Andor, mm -hmm. he wasn't six. He, he wasn't six years old. And he was definitely not a part of the rebellion. So is he is he referring to a larger fight? Or did we just break canon? I think it's the the fight against the the Empire. Not not necess you don't necessarily have to be a part of the rebellion to not enjoy the Empire's lead. And I'd have to go back and rewatch it. But even when I was watching Andor, remember that, okay, maybe head canon, this guy this kid could be six. Because we get that flashback episode yes. of him at home when he's gets picked up. So yeah, it, it's a little like, okay, you're you're not fighting in the rebellion at six, but what what kid really is in the rebellion at six i think what it even in that moment though the way he could be saying it is, is it could be a hyperbole mm. where he's talking to jen he's like but my whole life i've been fighting the empire mm. it's like you know if, if we're talking it's like oh yeah when i was like whatever three i did this you probably were a little older maybe it it doesn't break anything it's kind of like me. when you say you first started going to church like you started going to church when you were little so you said you've been a christian your whole life but were you really? I mean, you were six years old. Would you mm. even know? So it's the same mentality of yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I was six years old. I was always for this mindset as long as I can remember. Yeah. I, and maybe I, he was yeah. six years old when the Empire took over. Well, that's because there was those flashback episodes. And that's what I kept going back to. Mm. Either way, I got to do a rewatch of Andor. That's yep. for sure. Um, and something that uh, Andor, I'm not going to try to focus on that show too much. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Let us know what you think. But uh, in the opening scene, Casting's first scene, he they're talking. He's talking with that other guy that he ends up shooting, and he's like, "They built a weapon. They built a Death Star." And Cassian, he he looks at him and says, "What? What are you talking about?" He's like, "A machine that can destroy planets." And just all I could think about was how Cassian helped build this Death Star, and he doesn't even know it. He helped build it. Mm. If, you, if you've seen Andor, there's a whole prison arc where they are assembling pieces to the Death Star. But not only does, does he find out in this movie that there's a Death Star, but he gets killed by this Death Star. And the irony of that is the Empire made him help make this machine. and mm. Built the gun that shot him. And I, I love the way he shoots the guy because it introduces a whole other layer to, all right, good guys versus bad guys. And... No, it's a little more fleshed out than that because Galen Erso, he's very much a good guy, but he helps make the Death Star, and he, and he delays it for quite a long time. You hear that in this movie, how how they would have got this done way quicker if I wasn't delaying the process and kept having errors come up. But then Cassian, he he is a little, gr you know, that guy who he shoots in the opening scene, his leg is hurt. He would get caught by the Empire, mm -hmm. and he's like, I can't have this. This takes a sacrifice, and that's what winning a war is going to do. I have to make some sacrifices. Mm. Not that I am condoning murder in any way, but in the context of the movie and in the rebellion. So don't sure have a shot-up leg around Ethan. Gotcha. No. Nope. Understood. <laughs> you know who is a good guy in this movie? Donnie Yen, who we haven't seen since Blade Two. <laughs> <laughs> Veteran of so this marathon. Yeah, he's been in the background for a lot of movies. He choreographs stunts a lot, and man, his first fight is so entertaining, so well put together. Probably because he just choreographed it himself. <laughs> 
I love Probably. that. I love his st- his bow staff fighting is so awesome, and his uh, his bow gun thing that he yeah. has, how just epic he is. He doesn't have to look. I mean, he doesn't need to he's look. Daredevil. He have eyes. He's daredevil. He's the daredevil. He just space. shoots. He yep. just do 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 do. So awesome. He, back in the day when I first watched it, he was my favorite character. Growing up a little bit, he's one of my favorites, but I wouldn't say he's my favorite now. But he was like, just if cool was a word in this movie, it was it was Donnie it's, Yen. It's crazy because you pluck this guy out of this movie, Donnie Yen, and you throw him into John Wick 4. Doesn't he have the same abilities and power set in John Wick 4? He's a blind guy. Well, they're just like, hey, you did a really good you job in Rogue <laughs> One. Can we just... just and they that. did it. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome. I love his stuff. I do like Donnie Yen a lot. And we, we kind of already talked about what he brings to the, the lore of just the force and mm. makes it more of a faith than anything. And you know, the, 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 the Lord will do as the Lord does, you know, the force will do as the force wills. Mm-hmm. I really like the super cool, the layers that brings you want to, you want to speak of veterans of this podcast. We also have returning Riz Ahmed as Ooh. Bodhi Rook. <laughs> We've previously seen Bodhi, uh, Riz Ahmed in Venom. <laughs> Venom, he he Venom. is Carlton Drake Venom. Venom. in Venom, and uh, he returns as the cargo pilot. He is literally the sweatiest, craziest guy. He's all over the place in this movie, and I kind of love it. He's probably the character I least connect with what? as part of the Rogue Squadron. He gets the best scene in the movie. There's this scene where uh, <laughs> Saw Guerrero brings out a squid. And the squid is gonna, is gonna, gonna tell us the truth. Your thoughts. <laughs> I think if that squid isn't in the movie, it's kind of the same movie. Because that next scene, it's like, would it be Star Wars without a, a random you're, squid? You're the pilot. Yeah. I, I am the pilot. You need a pilot. Was it? So what you're saying is, Ethan, was it necessary to put the squid in the movie? It wasn't, but I liked Micah's point: is you need crazy creatures in Star Wars. Mm. Well, there's a lot of them in this. And there's movie. a lot of uh, just people in this movie, just humans. So throwing a little, a little bit of that, we do get Admiral Rattus. Oh yeah, dude. Is he related to Admiral Akbar, or just <laughs> as same far species? as? Well, they have the same first name, species girl. Admiral. Yeah, They're both <laughs> named Admiral. <laughs> yes, no, Admiral Rattus is great. I I wish it was, you know, I wish it was Akbar. Hey. We get Akbar in uh, the Last Jedi next week, so don't you don't you worry. He oh. will live long and prosper. Yeah, for about uh, we'll we'll live to long, it. And prosper. <laughs> we, we will get to it. Admiral Raddus is great. Mon Mothma, Genevieve O'Reilly coming back from her deleted scene in Revenge of the Sith. What a what a W for her is right? just being taken out of Revenge of the Sith and then getting this call. Hey, do you want to come? Wanna come? Uh, I don't know. Be in this movie. And then years after this, getting a call, hey, do you want to be a main character in this show called Andor? Like, the progression for her is really cool to see. And I I love the Micah had said that there are no politics in this movie, but there is one really great scene at at Yavin where Jin is saying, hey, we have to go. I, I know my dad left the plans for the Death Star. We, we need to go get them. And they're like, no, it's it's a trap, essentially, is what they said. And there's that whole council, the rebellion council, and they're meeting, and they're like, no, no. And I love that scene. Like it, it it's because it mixes that politics of the old school, but with the the love I have for the the empire. And I love the scene before that where they're in hyperspace traveling over, and Cassian's like, you have the recording, right? Like you have the message, and you're thinking, oh, Cassian, he's not buying it. He's not buying it. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't have to convince me. Oh, I'm not the one you got to convince. Oh, man, that yep. that was good. That was yep. good. And you also get some really huge, epic ship designs, some new, some old. U-Wings were introduced for this. Hammerhead Corvettes were introduced for the this. Hammerhead Corvette was sick. For the eagle-eyed out there, you also get the ghost from Star Wars oh, Rebels. And which the eagle-eared. Captain General Syndulla. And the eagle-eyed. Chopper. Chopper. Yeah, man. Chopper was in it. I missed it. You missed him. He's I've in the background looked it up of before. one scene. Yeah. 
Rebels was big during this time. Vader was in Rebels. We were fresh into season two. All right. Favorite character of the movie? Chopper. Hands down. (laughs) And so honestly, just while I was watching this movie, it took me back to 2016 Star Wars fandom. It was it was a good time being a Star Wars fan. It was an easy time to be a Star Wars fan. Everything they were putting out, there was minimal complaining from the fan base. It's like the the <laughs> glo- the glory days of Marvel when yeah, everything man. Marvel dropped, there was no debate. Yeah, that was fun. That was good. Now, same with Star Wars, same with Marvel. Anything that comes out, you need a hard stance on. And if you disagree with what someone else agree- says, oh, you're wrong. You're wrong, and that's just a fact. It was nice to be in a time where yeah. Star Wars was just great. Mm-hmm. Like, and I mean, there were naysayers, there mm-hmm. were, but it was so <laughs> like, look at that lawnmower. Whoa, no, no, it's a Hot Wheels no. car of Chopper. <laughs> Are you guys aware of Chopper's kill count? Yeah, I was about you to say uh, that? Chopper is my favorite with the highest <laughs> cannon kill count. That's, yeah, man, that choice. A, he is going on record as having the most amount of kills. Is it higher than technically Luke destroying a Death Star? Because aren't Ooh. there millions in a Death Star? I think actually it was. He it, he does have more kills than Luke destroying the Death Star. He has the most confirmed kills, I'm pretty sure. In Star Wars? Chopper kill count. As high as 50,000. Because <laughs> he blew up two Star Destroyers within moments of being on camera in Ahsoka. He was looking to bomb something because it was easier. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take something out. Oh, Chopper. We almost had him bombing some things in this one. I wouldn't be surprised, man. 49,997 <laughs> estimated indirect kills using sabotage. He's also killed three other astromechs, one other <laughs> droid, and killed. Uh, tried to kill Ezra twice. Oh. And suggested infanticide once. Is that old? Did this he, is seven years ago. Did he do any additional kills in the Ahsoka show? I have no idea. I don't know either. I don't I know he was throwing bombs behind him, but I don't think he actually ever killed anyone. Darn. But hey, Ahsoka's not over yet. We still have season two and the Mando movie. So he's there's still time for Chopper. I think the time has come, boys. What do you guys think? Should this count as a lightsaber battle? Darth Vader just oh. smoking the rebels? <laughs> no, not it much can't. of a battle, more yeah, like a can't. slaughter. <laughs> That's going to the top. I mean, right. honestly, we won't count it. Though. Yeah, no lightsaber battle in this. But if you, this. yeah, no, no lightsaber battle rank. But if you mention the Vader duel, I'm sure we'll talk about it further in the podcast for favorite scene, maybe. But uh, the the way that that single scene, like if that was just a short film. The way that the uh, the rebel fighters that's operate. a one hundred million view video he, on YouTube. He yeah the the rebel officer goes from open the door, get this door open, come on to just take it, just take it, come on, take this, take this, take this. And like the other the, guy probably doesn't even know what it is. No, and re- just has to get reality it. sets in where he he's he knows. All right, I'm not gonna make it out of this. <laughs> this this guy's gonna get me. Oh, and he's trying his darndest. Mm-hmm. And you know what else tried its darndest? This movie in the award season. Mm. It got Academy Award nominations for Best Sound Mixing and Best Visual Effects. What did it lose against so for visual there, effects? Because Civil War, even, maybe? To me, watching this, every, so many of the shots, I was just in awe of how, oh, man. how good it looked. The opening and, shot, just like, it reminded me of Interstellar. How cool that looked. And I think... To me, the, the we kind of mentioned it with Force Awakens, but to me, this might be my vi- most f- favorite visual m- movie from Star Wars. And the shot, it it's on brand, too, because the eclipse just happened a few days ago. Mm. But when the Death Star comes and it blocks the sun, that's all I could think about when people were talking about the eclipse was, and I think when the Death Star did it, it was a little cooler. <laughs> it was way cooler. Star Wars oh, did that man. way cooler. This was, this was the year that... Uh, La La Land and Moonlight oh. swept. Moonlight just 
shouldn't have been up there. But yeah, but I saw for visual Moonlight. effects. No, no, no. Uh, so oh, was Arrival, Arrival came out that year. Hacksaw Ridge. Oh, La La Land. Manchester by the That's Sea. That's a tough year. It is. But it was a packed year. What was visual effects? What won visual effects that year? Yeah, visual effects was the Jungle Book. What? Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. You got to give it to the Jungle Dude. Book. I actually, yeah. It, it was insane. And if not the Jungle Book, I totally could have seen Doctor Strange or Kubo. And the two okay. strings getting that because those are both awesome movies. This movie just it looks so good. Also, I want to point out, uh, OJ Made in America was the best documentary that year. Rest in peace, OJ. The Juice. He died today. Don't know if you guys knew that. Oh, he did. Yeah, I did not see that. He died wow. of cancer. Oh, Rest on this peace. day. On this day. So man, we're recording on. Uh, he Thursday. was such a good guy. Thursday. Yeah. Dang. Hey, the glove maybe did, they'll find a bigger the glove, glove. Didn't fit. <laughs> Ben, <laughs> innocent till proven guilty. Sound mixing, it lost to Hacksaw Ridge. I'll give it to them. Yeah, I'll give it Hacksaw's to them. Hacksaw's good. Hacksaw is good. That sound mixing category is tough right there. Yeah. With Hacksaw yeah. Ridge, oh, 13 man, and hours. 13 hours. La La Land, Arrival. Yeah, that, that's tough. I would have given it to Arrival. But La La Land. Oh. I love that it's in there, though. Yep. It, yep. Nominees aren't wins, but mm. it's cool to see at least, you know, it's got to feel good as a as a filmmaker to get that nom definitely but yeah a lot the so many of the shots in this movie i i've been thinking about i watched this movie over a week ago for the podcast and i just keep replaying a lot of the scenes in my mind and that that rain sequence when the the tie fighters come into play and they're they're weaving between the mountains Mm -hmm. like oh that was cool that's cinema this was also the year that suicide squad won oh makeup and hairstyling (laughs) Yeah, lots of really cool shots. Oh. I could have seen it winning visual effects, but it was just up against some tough competition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the story of this movie. It it was it wasn't an episode, right? It wasn't a numbered Star Wars movie, so it was already up against that. It was uh, up against so many other movies that year. It just got lost in the mix, and especially we'll see later with uh, Solo and even Rise of Skywalker, and I mean. The Last Jedi tainted a lot of future Star Wars content, not just the movies, but the shows too. I'm pretty sure Rebels got hit with a lot of it. I well, mean, La- yeah, Last Jedi is definitely the the hinge of where hatred and discourse and hate flew through them. Yeah, hate flew through them. It was also stay tuned next week, folks. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was also nominated for visual effects and best makeup and hair for some reason uh, in the BAFTA awards. I guess, just because it's a Star Wars movie. <laughs> Why not? I don't know about the makeup and hair. I mean, Cassian, he had some pretty nice locks, but... That's true. But well, Diego Luna has, has better locks than Cassian ever did. That's true. He's got <laughs> nice, true. long, like, Jesus-esque hair. John Locks. <laughs> you want to talk about tough competition, gentlemen. Ethan, do you have a favorite character in this, in this movie? Mm, don't fav- you dare take Chopper. Don't take Chopper. Don't take Sindula. I... <laughs> The the rebellion is my favorite character, but Shut more specifically, up. I'll go I'll go Cassian, <laughs> I'll go Cassian Andor, uh, just because his show. It's hard for me to not look at him and not see the show, because so much of that falls back on the the backstory that we've got for him. But just a little bit, I think you get in this is really meaty, and how he is more of a gray. He's like he's like Han Solo, but already a part of the rebellion but already way more uh you know morally ambiguous i really like that and not that i like morally ambiguous people but the way they do it with cassian i think is done really well and the the layers he brings to the empire and the 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 whole movie his, his job is he's got to kill galen right for part for that first half that's his job that's why he's helping Jin get to to galen or so mm-hmm. is he's got to kill him and uh when k2so who this is our first time mentioning k2so he he tells Jin, well, his his rifle was in sniper formation. You know, he's ready to hunt some heads. And that I, I just love Cassian and just the the way he is. <laughs> well, and then and then Donnie Yen says, you know, um oh, the, something about the the force being dark around someone who's about to kill. Because yeah, he looked like a killer. Cool. Yeah. You're right. He yeah. asked the question and then you're like, Well, wait a minute. We know he's a killer because he killed his the spy at the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. 
So you really I don't like know. Right you have genuine tension the first time you watch this movie when he goes up to the cliff face. I forgot if he shot him or not. And aims the scope down at Galen. Mm-hmm. He totally could kill because we've seen him kill before. Mm-hmm. The, the writing with Cassian's character. I'm surprised this movie works as well as it does ha- ha- like because it got so hacked up. And so much of it was reshot. Mm-hmm. Do we I still know think it happened? works really well cohesively. Uh, yes, we do know why that happened. It's because the original movie was way darker. Oh. Way more gritty of a war film. Hmm? can always look it up. Well, yeah, but big... for the podcast listeners who don't care to look it up. Well, I mean, that's one of the big reasons why. Yeah. It's because it was too dark for Disney. Wow. Like, okay, I would have it, liked a, a full-on dark Star Wars movie. But it's... We're never going to get that. You have to accept that. Because mm-hmm. as I've learned to accept that we're just not going to see certain stories under Disney, you just have to learn to accept that there is a limit to how dark we can go under Disney. And, which is crazy because I heard a, an interview with George Lucas this week where he was talking about the... It was right after the prequels came out or something. And he was like, I mean, you got to remember, these, these movies are for children. And, and uh, I won't go very dark for these movies. And... If Disney didn't <laughs> buy Star Wars, I don't think we would have gotten anywhere near what Rogue One did. Well, I mean, that's funny for George Lucas to say because Anakin kills a bunch of younglings. So well, yeah, but it's for children. Also, do you guys have for you guys seen the Clone Wars? Like it's for the kids, guys. And also, yeah, the kids I'm not animation just, show. The, yeah, I've seen it. I'm not just talking about the animation and the live action. I'm also talking about like the games and the novels, hmm. that type of content. Mm-hmm. All around, all that. you know, I got to read. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is under Disney, yeah. there is a limit to how far you can go. And actually, Lucasfilm went a lot darker with some of their stories than Rogue One did. Mm-hmm. Not on the big screen, though. Not on the big screen. And and Andor does a good amount of just kind of it's more of a adult focused show as opposed to. Oh, yeah, the kid can watch this. Because I've talked to some kids who've seen Andor, and they said it's the boringest thing they've ever seen. So it definitely has its audience, but it's, I don't know, what what kind of dark are we looking for? Hmm. What Like, I'm asking you two. I want to see Robert Pattinson beat up people on a train station kind of dark. I'd love to see ancient Sith, a Sith story, you know? Eating planets. Darth Nihilus, Darth Sion, Darth Revan. Those stories are Darth definitely Crate. not... I want to see Darth Crate. Darth Crate. You could go there even, but those stories are very dark. Give us the story of the one Sith. That would be so cool. Darth Crate? Yeah, I know. Oh, I okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. I thought... Yeah, yeah give me... Give, like, But with all the but, Sith. Like, that's the thing. You're just not going to get that dark, you know, mm-hmm. where we could have maybe gotten that. Like, the old Republic games, that got pretty dark at times. But it was definitely more gritty... I like the tone it settled on. I like the tone that Rogue One is. I like what it is now, I would say. It's gritty. Yeah. It's gritty, but they definitely came in and added a lot. I think a lot of the reshoots were, hey, let's let's have let's have Jin pass the two guys in the cantina, you know? Yeah. Let's ha- let's have more Vader. It does have that little you know? little Star uh, Disney flair. To it. Yeah. It's that, hey, look at this. Such look as this. my favorite character in this movie, K2SO. Yeah. I think that this Ooh. is comedic, uh, a, a comedic break character in Star Wars, the best it can be. Yeah. I think that it takes what C3PO and R2D2 do as separate characters, combines them into one, and gives him functionality in the story can be directly a part of all the action. Yeah. 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 I love uh, how it's very dry humor. It's very, you know, you just got to listen to him talk at my favorite part of this whole movie. It's not my favorite scene, but I just love <laughs> how Jin without a second, just pff, shoots that one Imperial droid. And then K2SO comes around the corner. Cause you as the audience think that was him. That was, him. <laughs> and he's like, you knew that wasn't me. Right. Did you know that wasn't me? <laughs> like, <laughs> Love that. So funny. And Alan Tudic. Alan Tudyk, he's uh, great. Yep. Brilliant as Hey Hey and Moana. Mm. I did not know he was in Moana. <laughs> he was Hey Hey. He was oh. a little chicken. <laughs> he was a little chicken. <laughs> what do you know about Does that? Does chicken have any lines? <laughs> he, goes, burk, burk. Uh. <laughs> he does do some voice work, does he not? He does that. Yeah, that's yeah. his whole thing. 
Oh, he, that's he, his whole thing. Yeah, his thing is like additional voices with some lead roles like this. Oh. I did thought he, he was more of an actor. Did he do the mocap too? I mean, yeah, that is an actor. Yes, he did do the mocap. In yeah. fact, he, there's a funny oh, it, story <laughs> of him on the red carpet with uh, Anthony Daniels, who Anthony Daniels had a very polite F you to him because he got to wear a motion capture, a nice, comfortable motion capture suit. And Anthony Daniels was like, you didn't, you didn't suffer through what I suffered through. I had that suit on for every single movie, and I had a lot of bumps and bruises. You know, so as he said, F you. Yeah, so on the red carpet he does a bunch of just like random voices not not a bunch of lead roles but like he did iago in the 2019 aladdin um he Lego, was star wars all stars he was he was the redneck guy in deadpool 2 with matt damon in the extended cut yeah is what you're saying yep. no. we did, i don't think we saw him we did see him yeah you saw him yeah, yeah matt damon not was the extended cut. version Oh. Yeah, you Mike had the extended version that I talked about. That's like, right. He was there. in Zootopia, another Michael Giacchino movie. So he was like Anthony Daniel. Like he did the voice of K2SO in a lot of Star Wars yeah. things yeah. during that time. That's cool. I like it when uh, the actor who plays him in live action comes to do him. In- Alistair Craig. Cree? Cree? Craig? Oh, is he the bad guy? Yeah. He's the bad guy in we Big should've... Hero 6. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, guys. There He's we go. here. He's here. <laughs> there we ben, go. Ben, who's There's your favorite character? Connection. Who's oh, your... I'm going with Admiral Raddus without a doubt. No he... crazy, like, crazy, uh, you're not going to go with, like, gold or red leader. So if I have to go somewhere, Because I think like, that's my cool. That, that's the coolest. Uh, I like I like two tubes. He is, I, he is very, like, no nonsense, and I think his alien design is really, really great. What is it? Uh, two tubes. That's his like quote unquote name. Isn't that the address you wear, Ben? Aiden Tutu. Aiden. <laughs> no, look up, look up two tubes and start the Star Wars character. You'll know who he is. Oh, this him. Guy. Yeah. What what race is that? I've seen that before. Species. Well, is yeah, that his? Right. His name was Ben Thick. Ben, you are. No thick. way. <laughs> that's that's why. why I like that guy. <laughs> ben. Thick. That's right. He's a Tagna. <laughs> also known as two. That's what. But he has a brother, but he has a brother that was that's in um, Solo. Tognath did not know that one. Tognath I'm not gonna, and Ben Thick. I'm not going to pretend to know it. But he, the way he acts in this ben, one. Ben, if you have two twins, can you name them Tognath and Ben, ben, Thick. ben, Thick? ben Thick? Yeah, man. All right. He locked in. Locked in. You have it here. Wife. Witnesses. If you have twins, though, you know that, that's the deal. I can't name my first son and then my second son. No, because okay. it it because the odds of you having a son are very high, but the odds of you having a twin much much lower. So me getting you to commit to this feels real. But okay. you know what? Yeah. The odds were very high of is this movie making a billion dollars? <laughs> what? I mean, this is the uh, second in five consecutive years of Star Wars movies being in theaters. So this was this was on the hype. People still like Star Wars, guys. People loved Star Wars, believe Back it or not. Day. Budget of two hundred million dollars, made a billion dollars, one billion, and the profit ratio was five point two times the budget, mm-hmm. which is crazy because it's still like way better than the Marvel movies did. Like but we think that Marvel movies did really well, right? And then we see. These profit ratios are just insane mm-hmm. based on their budgets. Marvel had its heyday for about 10 years, but Star Wars has always been a juggernaut at the box office. Oh, yeah. I will, because as as of recording this, the next announced Marvel movie or Star Wars movie is the Mando Grogu movie. And the sentiment on it is just... And I don't... like These are characters we've seen for three seasons on Disney Plus for essentially free. I don't know what the box office for that's going to look like. Hey, come see these characters whose story has kind of been muddled by the Book of Boba Fett and the third season. And Disney movies are already on the on the fall because people anyway. see yeah. Disney movies that are going into theaters and they're like, oh, well, it'll be on Disney Plus in a month. That's why Wish, partially why Wish bombed, but... Uh, that was their their big movie for the hundredth year anniversary of of Disney and mm-hmm. just bombed. And I, it'll be interesting to see how Inside Out Two does. 
and that'll be the projection because of a Pixar movie bombs like that. We'll see it's how a not, Star Wars. It, that's going to be what? another billion dollar Disney sequel. I don't. I don't know. We like, like Micah was saying in the light of Disney Plus. What is it going to look like? And especially Mando and Grogu. You've only seen those characters if you have Disney Plus, and it's. I don't know. Yeah, they did. Oh, a Star Wars movie is back in theaters, but I don't know what. What? How will it I be remember? Received? Just a few short years ago, we were like, "Oh, I can't wait for the next Star Wars movie in theaters," and now here we are. And we're like, okay. I can All right. wait. Yeah. I can wait. Yeah. When's that coming out again? Oh, yeah. I don't care. Ugh. I'll watch it. They did re-release the three COVID Pixar movies. Uh, that was Turning Red, Soul, and um, there was another one. I forget it right now. But Luca? Luca, yeah. And they all did pretty well box office-wise in the re-release. So we'll see. Yeah. But yes, people are not excited as, as much as they were back in the day for... Mm. Rogue One, which made over a billion dollars. Yeah, the the brand's been by, diluted now. Same with Marvel. You have to make us care. Yep. You make the thing is Barbie and Oppenheimer proved this. You make a good movie, people want to watch. People will go to the theaters and see it. Mm. It's a, and not that that is simple, but kind of that's simple. You know, make a good movie. We are past the age of nostalgia cash grabs for movies. And yeah, not that every good movie makes a ton of money because there are some hidden gems. Like I know famously both Blade Runner films have flopped very hard when it comes to profit the thing ratio. And Blade Runner came out the same week and flopped mm. to E. T. And yeah, they would uh, go to become these cult classics. I think it was E. T. But know. you know what didn't flop in the scores category? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? We haven't talked about our favorite scene yet. Oh, that's true. We haven't talked why because we're about to go into scores here. We can't do that without favorite scene. And there's a lot of good you're scenes right, to right. pick from in Rogue One. Because, I mean, we've been gushing about the movie for the last watchers. hour or whatever it was. Yeah. I can't <laughs> look at the time. We've been going way too long. It's, it's not long enough. Ethan, do you have a favorite scene in Rogue One? I think my favorite scene is that scene where uh, Jin has to tell the rebellion what is happening and then they all digress and they or they all discuss it and they talk about okay yeah sure maybe there is a flaw built into the deep layers of the death star but it's too big of a risk we can't do this and you kind of get a lot of the the love i have for now maybe this isn't my favorite scene i'll commit to it whatever i'm here go, i'll go with that scene that's all i have to say I'm on judge it. Okay. That scene all right. yeah you, you should <laughs> i love this movie though i really like it it's a lot of good scenes in everybody's here ethan's favorite I know, scene I, I, <laughs> guys man it's like ben's take on Force it's kind of hard to to find a favorite scene for me <laughs> Dude, in this movie hang on i gotta i gotta address that i was thinking about that the other day you said that you said force awakens was my hottest take on the podcast bigger than do the you Punisher. stand by that by those words ethan? i would agree with that bigger than the the punisher Oh, no, yeah. like my hottest take, because we're talking about Force Awakens here. Ben, pre present to us what a hotter take would be. Like, yeah, Force Awakens isn't great, but a no. five, five out of ten. But like, how is that Low. uncommon at all? There's so many people who have that As opinion. K2SO says, it's not high. Oh, yes, for, but yeah. but like to say it's a hot take is mm -hmm. is it to say it's a take that you don't hear often. It's mm -hmm. a take that is like, wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. You hear this take all the time. Mm -hmm. I know that it's a five that out of ten. Force 10? Awakens is bad. Yeah, I don't hear that it's bad. I hear that the trilogy is bad. That's what I usually hear. Mm -hmm. But I'm not scouring the internet for for like takes on Force Awakens. That's just my. But you, but you would you would say that's my hottest take. Force Awakens. That's for, the one that I disagree present with. Present the a most. hotter take, Ben. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. I, I I would say. Probably like Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance being a one star is a hotter take than that. What? But we agree. With we that. all agreed on well, that. Well, okay, just because you guys agree on it doesn't mm. mean it's a hot take. On Honestly, according to the internet, we all have a hot take for that score, you know? Yeah. Sure. But like Force Awakens? I don't know. I was just thinking about that the other day and I was like, huh, a five out of 10? And that supports what I said last week about the religion thing. Mm. Ben, ben was lying in bed. Did they really make fun of my my score being a five? No, it's them. They're wrong. Well, it's that bad on, move the movie, on, guys. On. I don't care when you guys make fun of me. But like we're not it's, it's, it's we're it, not it was just interesting that that was where you went to as far as hottest take. 
goes, you know? Maybe it is a hot take. I don't hear many people dogging on Force Awakens. They say it's not the best, but I, I never hear someone say it's actively bad. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. That's just me, though. And I, I'm pretty hot on, on Force Awakens. I liked it. But listen to last week's podcast. We want this one. That take. This week's podcast. Yes. <laughs> uh, my favorite scene has got to be when the Hammerhead, uh, hammerhead ship rams into the star destroyer oh, yeah, man. and is just pushing it and everyone's bracing for impact you don't see that gorilla that saw gorilla warfare <laughs> <laughs> nice in star wars in spaceships gorilla warfare we didn't put planet of the apes yeah, out did. here yeah we did oh it's up there it's guys. on the giacchino it's show behind us nice giacchino <laughs> show michael was ready <laughs> But yeah, uh, that was super sick how they pushed it and took out two Star Destroyers with one hammerhead ship. Super sick. Loved it. It's a, it's a great one. It's all you have to say. Love the visuals on that. I love how white and a clean these Star Destroyers look. And then these dirty, grimy... Stormtroopers. This is the height of the rebellion like infantry levels because they dwindled so much after this fight. It's an element you don't really see a lot of in the original trilogy. Yeah. Love it. Uh, I'm going to be boring. I'm going to pick the Vader. scene that was my favorite oh. scene since I first saw it. It's going to be Vader. I ha- we got to we gotta throw Ooh. that in there, though, for favorite scene. In the back to tank, like, naked? Th- this is your now new you're hot talking. take. This ben is your thick. new now hot you're take. Talking. Ben Thick. No, I, <laughs> this scene speaks for itself. I know you've all seen it. The Vader se- The Vader hallway sequence is my favorite, without a doubt. Slowly, you start to realize that it's going to be Vader as the rebels start to look around. They look behind them, and it's dark. The way the scene is shot visually. Dark Vader, more like. Dark. It's it's so good. It's with a, it's the best scene in the movie. As every kid who ever saw Star Wars. Dark Vader. Hulper. I, Hulper. And my mom. Isn't that Dark Vader? To dark. any Sith <laughs> dark. who has a red lightsaber. Dark Vader. Yeah. I, that would be too on the nose for the... The dark side to be dark. That's dark mall. Because that's all they know, man. Dark Sidious. It works. Go it play works. on that Nintendo. <laughs> Micah, now give us scores for Rogue One. All right. So Rogue One, Rotten Tomatoes critic, 84%. User, 87%. Metacritic critic score, 65. Ouch. Uh, Metacritic user, 76%. Letterboxd is sitting at a 74. I think that's like a, what, like a 3.5, a 4 territory. Yeah, right yeah around 4 there. territory. IMDb, 7.8 out of 10. Averaging out to a 7.7. 7. Uh, 77%. What do you guys think? A 7.7. 7. Just so a we're... little lower than Interesting. Force Awakens at a 78. Mm. So where does that fall on our, Does is that 5th? I guess on our on our ranking as far as those scores go, yeah, that it would is. be uh, fifth place. Yeah. So as far as the internet goes, this is right underneath Force the first Awakens. three: yep. Force Awakens, and then there's Rogue One, and then Revenge of the Sith, just underneath that at a seventy three. Yes, just hanging on. Yeah, and hanging then uh, we've got life. the Hollywood Reporter ranking, Ooh. which would put this movie at. Third place. Oh, wait, sorry. Fourth place. Okay. Similar spot. And <laughs> my The Last Jedi score, when I came out of the theater back in 2017, I put this in seventh place. Ooh. I was not hot on this movie. Mm. Because no. you had just seen. The because peak. I had just seen the peak that is. <laughs> the Last Jedi. The Last Jedi with the gambling planet and mm. with. Anyway. That's Save it for next week. week. Save that's it for next, next week. week. Ethan, yeah. Is what it, do you it, think about? Is it time? I it's think time. it's time. The, the, this is the score that matters. Yeah. Those other scores, who cares? Right. The internet. This is the official canon of what is best. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you guys sit around all podcast hour, hour and whatever a half at this point. Maybe hear us meander about stupid Star Wars. This is where stupid. this is where it all matters, mm-hmm. right? Our mm-hmm. time to give our score for Rogue One and. Guys, I really like this movie. Like like I said, I watched it over a week ago, and I have been replaying scene after scene in my mind, and I actually wanted to schedule it out where this week I had a chance to rewatch this before recording. Didn't work, but there are very few movies that I like come into the podcast like 
man, I wish I, I know I watched this recently, but I wish I rewatched it again before talking about it. And this one was one of those movies and like visually it's awesome. I think music, you guys said it, even, even I noticed while watching, I wrote it down, like the, the first opening and the rendition of the Rogue One theme. I really like that. My Michael G coming in and just killing it on all levels. But I think that's kind of how this whole movie is for me. I think writing really good. You have Tony Gilroy in there and just the the dialogue in, in certain scenes really gets me and the, the the ambiguity of characters. And I know that's a critique of this movie is, OK, maybe we don't get the characters fleshed out. And OK, maybe I do need the IMDb page open to know all these characters names. But that's, to me, that's kind of the point is. You know enough about these characters to know who they are and what they're going to serve to help the rebellion. And Andor kind of really shed some light on this that that this the whole fight against the Empire is just like so dog style. And you you see this like they're they're in the trenches and they're running around on that that Hawaiian planet, which mm. is beautiful. And the shots we didn't talk about the the ATATs walking on the beach. And I'm getting shot at as they're walking, like visually and story wise. I, I love all this. And this, as Ben said, does what a good prequel should do. And Ben opened with talking about how when he saw it in theaters, his dad went home and watched the beginning of A New Hope. And I think we all kind of had that urge right when this movie ends to go, should I just pop in A New Hope? Should I do that? I'm and I was thinking th- that. <laughs> and I, right. And I think that's what a good prequel does is it gets you to go. Well, now let me just watch the other movie. Let me go do that. This does that so well, and it builds upon that world. And like I said, my favorite era of Star Wars is the original trilogy, and it's because of the grip that the Empire has on the Rebels. And you get that grip more than anything else. And you take a movie where all your main characters die, all of them, even your main villain. He's dead by the end of this movie, and I really like that and kind of uh, symbolizing like, this is bigger than any of these characters. This is a bigger fight. And I really like that. And I really love the peace that this is in the Star Wars world. And yeah, I think we all were fighting where to put this. How high do mm. we, we all like this movie, yep. but how much do we like this movie? And I don't know. I, I, I really like this. But I don't know if it, it touches. <sighs> okay. I think. I like this better than Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi mm. is my lowest ranked original trilogy film. Got it at 9.4. 9.4. Uh, you know what? I like it right in that bit. I'm going to go 9.4 with this one. That way, if you ask me tomorrow, I could say that I like Return of the Jedi better. But it, it really depends like because the end, the last hour of this movie is so incredibly strong for me Mm -hmm. visually pacing energy it's just all there i love this movie so much so i get yeah i go 9.4 is where i want to sit this so putting it at my personal tied for for third place on this list so you said that return of the jedi is your favorite star wars movie you're talking personal favorite not ranking wise Mm -hmm. it like it's a it's a throw up with any my my top five could because even on some days, I don't know if Re- Revenge of the Sith would ever fall up into my favorite category, but I really like that one too. It's, it's like these are all great, yeah. But where do they fall in my my grade? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So good point. And when I, we were talking about Return, I said that was maybe the most fun of the Star Wars movies, but critically, it's not not the best. But uh, mm. yeah, I like putting this nine point four. I like it right in that bunch. I can't picture putting it lower than that. Whoa. Mikey, you think that's too high? 9.4? What do you got? What's your score? Well, so I like this movie a whole lot. This is a beautiful movie. It, The score, the visuals, the, the characters, everything is exactly what you would think a Star Wars movie should be based on watching A New Hope. It's like they watched A New Hope and they're like, all right, let's make another movie just like that. Like in that same feel, right? And... They executed it perfectly. I mean, I I love this movie. The final act, like what Ethan was saying, was awesome. I personally love the beginning, too. Mm -hmm. Um, They build up the characters so well. You know every character's motives. 
and then you also don't know whose side some people are on. And they touch more on that in Andor, but I, I, I just love how Star Warsy this feels. And I don't know what other word to describe it as. There's the magic. I feel like the magic is kind of there here. Um, but where I would rank this is, I don't know. I was thinking of putting it higher than Empire, but then I'm seeing my score and I'm thinking, no, it's, I, I wouldn't put it higher than a 9.6. And I definitely like this a little more than Attack of the Clones. I think it's got, I mean, Ethan Wood definitely. <laughs> just a little, you know, just a little, just a little better than Attack uh, of the Clones. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm thinking that same camp at a 9.4 because I don't think it's better than Empire. I think it's just a little bit better than Attack of the Clones, in my opinion. It's it's right there in that. That's crazy. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, reason. No, it, 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 sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I love how high Attack of the Clones is because I don't know any other discussion where it's like, oh, I don't know. It's 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 not as good as Empire, but oh, it's a little better than Attack. Like they're just so close <laughs> in your score. I, well, it's so they're funny. further than you think. I mean, <laughs> nine point two and a nine point six. I'm giving this right in the middle of that a 9.4. I think that Rogue One is one of those movies that I wish we got more of uh, Star Wars wise. This is what I wished a lot of Rebels would be is mm. just these uh, it, Rebels doing things towards a greater story that we already know of and like how these things happened. That's not quite re- what Rebels was, but it I Rebels is a different thing. I, I like Rebels too. So Rogue One does everything that I wanted it to be. And I don't think that they could have made it a different way uh, better. I loved it. 9.4. Dang. No complaints, but it doesn't do anything super spectacular to me besides the visuals. The visuals and the character building are the ones that uh, that stand out to me. Mm. But the character attachments, like what Ethan said, I don't think that you're as attached to them, but they're so fleshed out and thought out that Mm. I got to respect it. Yeah. That's it. I love you say that because that's people's critique for the movie is yeah. how they're not fleshed out. But I don't so, think that's what right. this movie's about. That yeah. you're not supposed to be. I mean, yeah, you can have some tear jerkers at the end with with them dying at this at the sunset of the explosion from the Death Star. But I don't think this is supposed to be a movie where you know that they're not going to make it out because they're not on anything else past this, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's expected. You can anticipate that. And that's what happens. And I'm fine with that. Okay. I don't know. All right. I, guys, I'm fine that they all died in the end. You guys are united in 9.4. Star Wars fandom united? Oh my goodness. So Ben's going to come out here with a six. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I also like this movie, guys. This is a, this is a good one. I don't know if I'm going to go... As high as 9.4, though, I would say... Talk about it, Ben. There's... 9.4 is high to me. Really high. It's... it's. I'm not dogging on it at all. But I think it's a little too high for me for Rogue One. I think there's so much good to this. But the... What is Star Wars and what makes up so much of Star Wars is that mythological storytelling and the broad strokes of how you know like the stanzas of how they rhyme and stuff like that and and you can say well this was this is not really trying to do that as much i would just say i prefer that type of star wars more it, it's this it's the same argument i have for let, let's say an andor you know andor is good despite popular opinion i do really like andor i i do really like it i just prefer other star wars mm-hmm. storytelling more than that. If it's a vending, if Star Wars is a vending machine, you're not going to hit Andor. You're not going to hit Rogue One. You're going to hit like uh, Clone Wars or the prequels, right? Like that's that. Not at first. Thing, at yeah. Least. yeah, not mm-hmm. at first. But, and that's not to say like, yeah, I've been gush. I've barely said anything bad about this movie this whole time. Like the Vader stuff, I absolutely love the visuals. We talked, We you guys have hit on almost every positive thing this movie has to offer. It's just, at the end of the day, I don't find myself so totally invested in this story because I personally don't find myself all that connected to this story and the characters especially. You know, you you guys say that 
that was the point. And that might be the point. I just prefer stories where I really can latch yeah. on to yep. the main character, you know? So just because, and that's where I see 9.4 as a little high, but I still really like this movie. So with all that said, I barely have anything bad to say about it. It's just those characters. So with that being said, I'm going 8.5 with this. Oh, it's rounding down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going 8.5 with my score. That doesn't hit a nine for me. It's totally a respectable score, though. Like you can, you can totally have Rogue One anywhere from that range. I don't see why it would be a bad movie. Uh, I I think this is in the upper echelon. Like, yeah, it's like you are at a buffet. What are you throwing on your Star Wars plate? And to me, when I'm at a, a buffet, what I grab is I grab okay, Rebellion, Empire. Maybe some Darth Vader. Definitely a lot of TIE fighters and X-Wings. That That's my plate. Mm-hmm. I love that. Right? that. That's not necessarily what you would fill your plate with. Bro. No. Then I get that. But that's not a criticism of no. Rogue One. It just it does affect my enjoyment of it, and it, it doesn't reach a 9 for me. Like, that's the thing. I love this movie. An 8.5 is a, like a really positive score for Rogue yeah. One. I just I find myself having to justify putting it that low. No, that, so... 8.5 is my score. 8.4 is really high for us, I think. 9.4. Yeah, yeah whatever. I mean, it's it's a high score. Uh, 9.1 Star Wars one is oh. the average, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so, Ben, with an 8.5. Oh, I thought you were saying that. My bad. My no, bad. Yep. No. Uh, 8.5. Um, me and Ethan with a 9.4 averages it out to a 9.1 out of 10. So, we all we all know it doesn't matter where our individual scores <laughs> That's right. put it. You know, it, it, this is the real moment we wait for. Where does it fall? In the ranking of everything. So first place, we've got Revenge of the Sith at a mm. 9.7. Second place, we have Empire at a 9.6. A New Hope at a 9.4. And Rogue One at fourth place with a 9.1. Beating out Return of the Jedi at a 9.06. Mm. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm okay. I Yeah, I think yeah, that it's I'm a little okay bit better that. than Return of the Jedi in some ways. Um, others might disagree. I know Parker... Return of the Jedi, that's his favorite. And some people, yeah, Return of the Jedi is a valid favorite. Mm-hmm. Any of these top five are totally acceptable as your favorite, in my opinion. <laughs> Rogue One used to be these actually my so good. third favorite Star Wars movie. It used to be. It used to be up there. But What's now it's I don't, what, I Force think... Awakens, Last Jedi, Rise. Rise of Skywalker. Solo, you had to put the Ewok the films fourth. up there. Yeah, the two Ewok films, than that, Solo. You know, yeah, Hollywood special. It's jumbled, jumbled around. So, so fifth. But you know what next week is? So yeah, wait a minute. Hold on. Fifth place, Rogue One. Or fourth. Fifth place, Rogue One. Or oh, fourth, fourth, fourth place, Rogue One. Yeah, fifth place is fourth place of the Jedi. for Rogue One. That's pretty high. Yeah, but I have yet to review holiday special, so it might bump that down. <laughs> so, <a little> bit. <laughs> if I uh, and we've only got three short weeks left, wow, guys. Three weeks, three weeks, and then our Star Wars wrap up cast, and then what? And then what? If we're if we're keeping score for me, just for people listening, I feel the need to say this: Revenge of the Sith is not my favorite. I do like Rogue One better than Revenge of the Sith. Mm. So I just want to say that for the listeners who are, who, I, I tried, I tried to bring revenge a little lower, but I, I couldn't do it. Right. These we might boys, all these boys loved it. I might have to lower my score of, of 10 to a, to a 9.8, just so that to I make can room, make room for next week. <laughs> the last <laughs> Jedi. The last Jedi. Yes. Uh, the peak Star Wars. This is the turning point of the flashpoint that where the spaghetti noodles touch. That's and a flash reference for everyone <laughs> watching. The fandom of Star Wars takes a turn for the oh. worst. Or for the best. Who Depending knows? Depending on your point of view. And depends on where your religion sits with Star Wars. That's 100%. Because I'm really... Ben, you said you're giving this 100%? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I am really pumped. Not, not to... Yeah, I, I'm excited to watch this movie, but... I'm excited to. I haven't seen this in ta- theaters. To talk about it with Ben and oh. and say, to, I'm, it's so going to be fun. We I found out fun. last or yeah, it was last week that Ethan Ethan is a sadist. <laughs> is he enjoy he enjoys a the suffering friend. of others. Yeah. And yeah, he I will say, <laughs> although 
On the podcast, I will say this. I have not seen The Last Jedi. Okay. Yeah. For seven years. Seven years. All right. We it's are, been seven yeah. years I since saw, I've seen I saw the it last in Jedi. theaters once, and then it was on Netflix, and I watched 20 minutes of it. I did the same thing. Did I watched you? it twice in theaters, <laughs> and then when it went on yeah. Netflix, I watched like until the They Fly Now part, and I was like, <laughs> well, that Fly Now was on Rise That's of not, Skywalker. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Wrong movie. The wrong Micah. One. Oh. <laughs> yeah, why we tried watching it re- leading up to the rise of Skywalker and we I got to Canto Bite and don't remember how the last Jedi plays out. I and don't tell me. So but I just don't remember. We're excited. Yeah. I genuinely I am excited to talk about this. It's all is a new Star sure. Wars movie, guys. It's gonna revolve around <laughs> Luke. Luke will be discussed greatly wow. next week and because uh, he's the last Jedi, right? He is the last Jedi. And uh, I'm exci- yeah. I'm so ready, guys. I'm so ready. <laughs> I am. I am. Because regardless of oh. if I love it or hate it, I'm gonna come in with some 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 heat. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I cannot wait. Last Jedi, and and if you're watching it at home, you know, feel free to skip Last Jedi in your rewatch. Not gonna lie, it'll save you some time. I'm not. It's it, whoa. It, just, it will. Whoa, Ben, Ben. That's not. That's not what the marathon has been. We will watch it for you. No, no, no. Is what I'm trying to say. That, that that's what the whole marathon is about, Ben. That's why we did the Marvel movie marathon was to see how films would would play in the grander context of everything, and we liked some movies better than we thought we would. Maybe next week is one of those. You just can't come in. Ready to hate, Ben. Got to come in ready to love. <laughs> but I did that the first time I watched this movie. <laughs> like I said, we're already we're already kind of starting our last so, uh, discussion. Let <laughs> us know what you want us to review after Star Wars. It's coming yes. up quick. Way uh, too we've quick. got a couple ideas. We in have mind, what? But we have three weeks. We have three weeks left. Three in weeks, Star Wars? and then a Star Wars wow. wrap up podcast. And I still have to watch Holiday <laughs> Special. <laughs> yeah, you do. Just Ugh. just get it out Look next week, Look, all right? So these are your averages down here, like your average scores. Ben, you're sitting at a six and a half. I'm sitting at an eight. Ethan, you're sitting at a six and a half. If I put in a half point score for a holiday special, that brings my score down to 7.4. I was like, why am I so low? Oh, yeah. the Ewok films and the holiday special mm. are taken into account. Yeah. Yes. So Well, stay tuned for next week, folks, for The Last Jedi. For now... This is Ben Rayside. This is Ethan. This is Made of Hope. And remember, Force will be with you. I am the Force. I'm one with the Force. The Force is with me. I'm one with the Force. The Force is with me.